That's Helga trying to catch a salmon. As you can see, it requires lots of energy. Even when the salmon are running, days can go by without catching a fish. Today, however, she is successful. Of course, she won't share with her twin sister, Holly. It seems that Holly is content to sit on the beach, while Helga keeps looking for fish. Perhaps she is practicing her yoga positions. The H twins were derived from the word hooligan, a scientific term to describe rowdy juvenile brown bears. As you will see later, they live up to their reputation. The first leg of our journey took us to Kodiak Island at the eastern end of the Aleutian chain. This is a world-class sport fishing destination and one of the largest commercial fishing ports in the nation. Including the large Coast Guard facility, there are about 4,500 permanent residents on the island. With green mountains plunging into deep tree-lined fjords, it reminds some people of Ireland, prompting the nickname Alaska's Emerald Isle. Kodiak Island has a rich historical and cultural heritage. The Alatic people have inhabited Kodiak Island for more than 7,500 years and still maintain some of their traditions and language. The Russians, who came here in the early 1700s to hunt sea otter, left their legacy in architecture and religion. There is lots of wildlife on Kodiak Island, so we spent a day here filming a few of the local residents like this colony of Stella sea lions resting on a floating pier. Sea otters are rare, but there are lots of birds.
Humpback whales also come here every summer to feed on small fish and krill. Although this island is famous for the huge Kodiak brown bear, we are off to Hallow Bay and Katmai National Park to film these beautiful animals, where they are protected from hunting and more habituated to humans. It's July in Kodiak, which means rain half the time and only four clear days in the month. We are lucky to get out by float plane just before an approaching weather system. We'll spend four days aboard the waters, a converted tugboat, and take the skiff to the beach each day to photograph the bears. Rain and wind limited our time on shore to only two days. It's early in the morning, and the sun is out for the first time since our arrival in Alaska. We want to spend as much time with the bears as possible, Yesterday, a storm kept us on the boat all day. We are in Hallow Bay, just at the point where a stream flows out to the bay. Chub salmon make a run up this stream to spawn in July, and it is a popular spot for brown bears to fish. It's low tide, so we should see lots of action. There are bears all around us, but none are close by. Let's wait and observe them for a while. The grizzly bear and the brown bear are the same animal. Brown bears found inland and in mountainous habitats are generally called grizzlies, while brown bears living in coastal areas are called coastal brown bears. The Kodiak brown bear, however, is reputed to be the largest of the species due to a heavy diet of fat-rich salmon. The Kodiak bear has been isolated to this region for some 12,000 years. As a result, they have a more diverse social structure and a smaller gene pool than other bears due to the close proximity in which they live. A huge, almost black male is walking toward us. Large males can weigh over 1,000 pounds and reach a height of more than 10 feet standing up. Brown bears are solitary animals, but come together this time of year to fish for salmon. They have a sense of personal space and rarely look directly at each other. That sense of privacy generally extends to us as well. He is very close now, but won't look directly at us, I hope. Eye-to-eye -eye contact is a challenging gesture among bears.
Perhaps spurred on by the big male's close approach to us, Helga is coming directly toward us. Since birth, she has been habituated to human presence and is constantly testing how far she can go. No real eye contact yet, but she is certainly raising our adrenaline level. Uh-oh, she's looking directly at us and is coming a bit too close for my comfort level. Hey, what are you doing? No! She actually looks like she's pouting. Of course, Holly has to come by to check out the situation. Guess who's back sniffing around us? Helga and her sister are five and a half years old and are fast approaching sexual maturity. Perhaps her hormones are kicking in. She is a beautiful animal and rewards our indulgence with a big smile. Brown bears are born in late January or early February when the mother comes out of hibernation. So these adorable cubs just across the stream from us are probably one and a half years old. They will stay with their mother for about three years, during which time they will learn which plants to eat, how to find them, and how to hunt. Females reach sexual maturity at five to six years of age and will breed every three or four years. So most female bears are usually seen with cubs in tow. They are born in litters of one to three after a gestation period of approximately seven months. This cub is only six months old and appears to be playing with a leaf. Sometimes female bears will adopt a cub whose mother was killed or is just uninterested in caring for her offspring. One female was observed with six cubs in tow for three years. The mother is fishing again and will share the catch with her cub. However, this time, she is not successful. It's getting a bit cloudy now, and the tide is starting to come in, so we're heading off into the meadow. Bears can only fish at Hallow Bay in low tide, when the streams and outlets are shallow. We'll go inland about a mile, where bears often congregate around a shallow part of the stream. We may be in luck. These bear tracks are very new. The water is fresher upstream, but is still a bit brackish here. The diet of the brown bears varies depending upon what foods are available in a particular season or habitat. Here in Hallow Bay, the availability of salmon, which makes up most of the food source, has led to behavioral changes that allow large congregations of brown bears to share an abundant resource. Brown bears are omnivores and will eat both vegetation and animals. They have molars in the back like humans, and canine teeth in the front.
There's not much action while the tide is in, so we'll take a lunch break, courtesy of our gracious hosts from the boat. The tide is going out, and the water level in the stream is receding. Right on cue. Here comes Helga to try her luck at fishing again. She just can't resist coming right up to us, and would probably entertain closer interaction. However, that is not a good idea. These are wild animals, and we should not encourage physical contact. The light is beginning to fade, so let's head back to the beach to see if there are any bears hanging out. That bear is Helga's mother, and she has two spring cubs in tow. She is comfortable with humans, so we should be able to stay with them long enough to get some good footage. Females reach sexual maturity at four to seven years old and breed in early May through mid-July. Bears experience delayed implantation, so that the fertilized egg does not begin to develop until November, enabling the young to be born in January or February while the mothers are hibernating in a den. Brown bears hibernate during the winter for five to eight months, depending upon the location and need to eat a lot in the summer and fall in order to build up sufficient fat reserves. This is particularly true for pregnant females who give birth to one pound cubs and then nurse them to about 20 pounds before emerging from the den in April or May. The mother does not eat or drink for seven months. Some males forego hibernating and stay awake all winter. Unlike other hibernating mammals, the hibernating bear maintains a high metabolic rate and nearly normal body temperature. It may even awaken during a warm period and move about outside the den. Scientists have been studying the physiology of bears in the hope of benefiting bedridden medical patients and astronauts during extended space flights. There are bears at the beach, and some are still fishing, and catching salmon. We have been out all day and have been fortunate in capturing wonderful footage of about 20 different brown bears. It looks like the twins are calling it a day, and so are we. Photographers and scientists have been coming here for many years, so the bears have become habituated to the presence of humans making it easy to observe them up close and without fear. We'll spend a night on the boat and then head back to Kodiak by float plane tomorrow. Brown bears are not an endangered species and are still hunted on Kodiak Island, but they are protected here in Katmai National Park. About 30,000 live in Alaska, with 3,000 on the islands in the Kodiak Archipelago. It has been a privilege to spend time with these magnificent animals and to be able to observe them interacting with their natural environment and with us. I hope you enjoyed sharing this experience and have gained a better understanding of the magnificent Kodiak brown bear.